pray for us tomorrow as we travel. Uh, like I said, the family's getting added to it. It's still a year of exponential growth. We're, we're praying right now about what to do about Sundays, whether to go to two services or we're, we're believing for greater. We know God's going to release to us greater as we steward what he's given us now. Uh, but uh, but well, we're praying about what, what to do, what, what you know, just waiting on the direction of whether to go to two services Sunday mornings, you know, for expansion, for growth, things like that. And I'm excited to, to man, just, just an honor to serve Jesus Christ today and this time greater than ever before. And um, no, no other way, no other life that I'd ever want to live uh, but this life that I live today. And um, anyway, so I'm gonna, I want you to stretch your hands here today because I need your prayers. I need the Lord today. I need His anointing. I need His words. And I surrender to you, Jesus, today to the anointing of the Holy Ghost. God, that you'll anoint me fresh and new today. Uh, Lord, to speak your word, your truth, to stay in line with your word, rightly divided. God, I pray that you'll help me to uh, speak to your people with power and demonstration. Lord, that your words, that the words that would come forth would bring change, that would bring deliverance, that would bring healing. And God, I thank you for it, Lord. I thank you, Lord, today uh, that you've chosen us for such a time as this. And God, weak vessels as we are, but you've chosen us, the weak things of this world, to confuse and to confound the wise. I thank you, Father, for the army that you're raising up before us here. God, I thank you for those that you're calling out of the darkness, calling into your light, that you're revealing your son Jesus to them. And God, I thank you for that today. I thank you for your word today, your word that is truth today, and, and, and your Holy Spirit that bears witness to what your word says. You said the word and the spirit would bear witness one to another. And God, I thank you that your word and your Holy Spirit bear witness that you are God today. And we declare you, Jesus, to be our Lord today. There's none like you. There is none beside you. You're the only reason that we stand redeemed today. The only reason that we're able to even stand up here with a voice to speak. God, you're the only reason that we're able to stand with life today because of the price that you paid for us today. And that's the only reason that we stand here like we are today. And God, we thank you, Father, that you've seen something in us when we couldn't see it in ourselves. Praise God. I thank you for that, Lord. I thank you that you're filling us with your divine love. God, like no other, that you're filling us with your divine passions that you're filling us with God your people Lord that's going to that's going to usher in this end time harvest Lord I thank you for it Lord I thank you that we are a church God that you've placed your spirit in Lord that you've washed in your blood today God this this church that is founded on the rock of revelation the revelation of who you are today God I stand to give you praise today and honor in Jesus name amen and amen, and amen, and amen. First the natural, then the spiritual. If you go to 1 Corinthians chapter number 15, verse 42 through 50. So also is the resurrection of the dead. The body is sown. Give me one second here. I'm going to read this out of this so I don't have to look up there, but you all can look up there on the screen. And follow along. 1 Corinthians chapter number 15. Verse number 42. Is where we're going to start I believe. So also is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown in corruption. It is raised in incorruption. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. It is sown a natural body. Say that, natural body. you got to look at that. We're reading the scriptures here. It is sown a natural body. Say that, it is sown a natural body. Look at your neighbor and say, I told you it was sown a natural body. you got, you got to get into this. This message is very important today. It is sown a natural body. It was sown a natural body. Okay, now watch this. It is, sown, it is raised a spiritual body. Say that, it is raised a spiritual body. It is sown a natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. It is sown a natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. Those of you online, thank you for joining. There's a natural body and there's a spiritual body. There's a natural body. There's a spiritual body. First the natural, then the spiritual. You've got to get this. You're going to get this message tonight. It's going to resonate in you. Revelation is going to grow in you. 
Amen. No matter where you're at spiritually, God can speak to you. No matter what level you're on, no matter if you got saved yesterday, no matter if you saved 20 years, God and the Holy Ghost can speak to you right where you're at and help you and challenge you and, and, and bring you to another level. Our job is to, amen, equip the saints, right? That's our job. That's our anointing, to equip you for ministry, raise you up to a place where you can start to do the work of ministry yourself and get in the, get in the game with us. <laughs> you know, like the football teams. You know, they out there and they, they sitting on the sidelines and they waiting and they hungry. And we out there and the quarterback's out there and they get in the plays and they all huddled around. And, and, and praise God, you, you on the sideline waiting to get in the game. You ought to be hungry to get in that game. You know, I remember being in football. I didn't want to sit on the sideline. Man, I couldn't wait to get back in that game. Well, I had my mouthpiece ready. I'm like, man, coach, put me in. I'm ready to hit somebody. You know what I mean? I ain't going to sit here like, yeah, no, my team's out there. Why? Because I'm ready to be a part of something. I'm ready to be a part of something greater than myself. I ain't doing it over here as a water boy. You understand what I'm saying? I mean, ain't nothing wrong with the water. We need water. Bobby Boucher, I tell you, we needed water. You better watch. I, I don't, I'm, not promoting, I'm not promoting movies, but what I'm saying is, is Bobby Boucher, you didn't talk about his mama. You understand? They, they understood it. He was the water boy. When they got on there, they talk about Bobby's mama. They ain't nobody getting away. You hear me? He knocked that one guy. He hit him so hard, knocked him back. You remember that? Anybody remember that? Anybody? You all remember that? You don't talk about my mama. You know what I'm saying? So, man, they got out there. They messed up when they did that. They found out he had something more in him than what he thought. They, had, they found out he had something more in him than what they was looking at, right? He was, he, 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 that was a different circumstance. But, man, I tell you, it's like that football player on the side. Man, you ready? If you're a real football player, you ready to get in the game. You ain't want to sit on the sideline. You ready to hit somebody. You ready to play football. That's, that's the way we should be. As a team player, we, should be, we shouldn't be wanting to sit on the sideline. I'm ready to get in something. I'm ready to get put my hand to something. I'm ready to get in the ball game. You understand? And, I, you know, and I'm not going to get into two-minute warning right now, but, but it is sown a spiritual body. It is right, or sown a natural body. So first the natural, then the spiritual. There's something to that. First the natural, then the spiritual. And so it is written. So y'all follow along up there, verse 45. First, the first man, Adam, if Adam, was made a living soul. Right? The last Adam was made a quickening spirit. The first Adam, a living soul, God breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, formed the dust of the ground, made him a living soul. He wasn't a quickening spirit though. He was a living soul. The second, the last Adam is made a quickening spirit. Follow me here. 46, how be it that he was first which is spiritual but that which is natural. So how be it that that was not first which is spiritual. How be it that that, that is not which is first is spiritual but that which is natural. And afterwards, that which is natural. So first that which is nat or yeah, first that is natural, then the spiritual. First the natural, then the spiritual. If you ever get these truths, you'll understand when the revelation goes off in you about first the natural, then the spiritual. You'll understand what the way the kingdom starts to work. Okay? Jesus said, I am the doorway. I am the way. I am the truth. There's no other way that man can be saved but the name of Jesus Christ. There's no other name under heaven that you can call on and be born again. There's no, you can call on Buddha. You can call on Muhammad. You can call on any of those. You can call on any of them. You can rub his belly, that big, that big statue. You can rub its belly. You can do all that. You can dance. You can hula dance in front of it. You can call on, you can call on Elijah. You can call, I mean, hey, he's a prophet. You can call on all them names. But I'm telling you, you're going to get up the same way you came down. But I'm going to tell you, but you call on the name of Jesus. There's something about the name of Jesus. He said, the name of Jesus is the name that is above every name, right? So we understand He's the doorway. He's the way. He's the truth. He's the life. There's no other way. There's no other way that men can be saved. I remember a testimony that I heard. I'm going to get back into the scripture, but man, we're getting into something. Say that. We're getting into something today. Come on. Tell your neighbor. We're getting into something. Oh, y'all looking like we're in, we're in some kind of, we, we ain't at the funeral. I went to a funeral the other day. I stood around the graveside. They had me to go pray. That's what it looked like. Come on, we ain't in the funeral. We're alive. I told them, I said, I'm not a funeral preacher. You don't want me to come preach your funeral. I'm going I'm to bring you to the, I'm going yeah, to bring you to the altar. I'm going to bring you to the, to, the, to the reality of that body laying there. Honey, he ain't here and he ain't coming back. What are you going to do? Life is but a vapor. That's what I told them. I said, life is but a vapor. My condolences to your family, but 
I had to look on the itinerary because I didn't know who they were. They just called me and I, I, I said, yeah, I agreed to it. But I looked, I had to look on the thing to see his name. I was like, uh, you know, and said his name. And I said, I ain't going to say it online. But, hey, he's in the grave. That body's dead. You know what I'm saying? He's laying there, but he ain't coming back. He's gone. What are you going to do? Where's your life at? Life is but a vapor. It appears for a very short time and time. And then you're going to be right there in that ground. There's going to be seven of them, eight of them carrying your casket, carrying your body and dropping you right there in the ground. Guess what? Your spirit, your, your, your spirit's going to be eternity somewhere. Heaven or hell, you're going to be somewhere. You understand? I, I'm not trying to be mean. I'm trying to, trying to get us into something. But I feel the Holy Ghost today. I feel the anointing building. I feel it building and building and building. You don't want me to be a funeral preacher. I'm not going to get up there sweet and lovely. I'm going to be nice to you, but I'm going to say there's going to be some power and demonstration. Right? Because you need to slap with reality. Hey, you know, you know what are you going to do now? We condolences. We love you. We, we, I'm not talking about being mean in the wrong spirit. I'm talking about where's your life now? You're one breath away. One breath away from eternity. And I remember this testimony that I heard. I'm going to get back into this, but I remember this testimony that I heard of this gang member. And, and his gang came to kill him. And they was out there in the, in the heart of like Florida, Miami or somewhere. And they had come and they had guns and he ran. And they were coming to, to assassinate him. And he, he, he ran through. The, it was, it was, a, it was a, uh, uh, some, some like, anyway, it was, a, it was a gang. Just put it that way. And so he said he tripped and fell. And when he did, he said they come around him and they come up on him and they was fixing to blast him. And he knew they had a death warrant on him. And he said, but he, he remembered being as a little kid and he was in a church and he remembered being there and he remembered that preacher. He'd come back to his memory. If you ever get in trouble, call on the name of Jesus. And he said it ran through him in an instant, split second. And he said, he said, Jesus! He said all of a sudden when he called on the name of Jesus, he got born again he said the, the members that had came to assassinate him started shaking and couldn't pull the trigger backed up like this and went like this and took off running the other way he got up from there saved never went back started preaching the gospel and as an evangelist and started winning them and today is a probably a worldwide evangelist started just preaching and telling everybody about this Jesus that he had called on. You can call on anybody else, but you call on the name of Jesus. I'm going to tell you something. If you call it from a right heart, I'm going to tell you something. But you, you in a time of trouble, you call on the name of Jesus. I guarantee you, he'll not let you down. He'll not fail you. I remember when I called on his name in a prison cell, I came up from that prayer and I wasn't the same no more. When I laid that down that day, see, mm, come on, let me get into something here. Are y'all with me today? Can you feel the Holy Ghost in this place today? Praise God. We're talking about first the natural, then the spiritual. First the natural, then the spiritual. It is written, the first Adam was a living soul. The last Adam was made a quickening spirit. How be it that he, or how be it that not first, which is spiritual, and that which is natural, and afterward that which is spiritual. So the first man is of the earth. Say that, the first man is of the earth. I'm finna take you deep. Say, Pastor's fixing to take us deep. Come on. Pastor's fixing to take us. We're fixing to go deep into the Spirit right here in just a minute. you got to follow me. We're building on something here. Okay? So all of a sudden, the first man, now, now we go back to that. The first man, Adam, Adam, Adam was a, of the earth, right? His, he was of the earth. This is what the Word says. He was earthly, right? Now, watch this. The second Adam, the second man, is the Lord Himself from heaven. The second one is the Lord Himself from heaven. What we call the last Adam. The last Adam. You understand what I'm saying to you? The first Adam, the, the last Adam. Nobody was created like Adam was until the second Adam, the last Adam, which was Jesus. You follow what I'm saying to you? Why is that? Because... Two, a man and a woman didn't come together to have Adam. A man and a woman didn't come together to have Jesus. God and woman came together to have Jesus. The Holy Ghost and woman came together to birth Jesus. God raised Adam 
from the dirt and then breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, making him a living being. So he didn't come together. And then what did he do? He took a, a rib out of Adam and made Eve. Now watch this. He never done that again because he gave man the ability to come together, man and woman, come together, reproduce. He gave them the ability in their self to come together to plant the seed for the one man to hold the baby in the womb. Now the baby would come. Why? Because he gave them the ability to reproduce. So the first Adam was of the earth. The second Adam was the Lord himself from heaven. First the natural, then the spiritual. Come on, we're getting into something tonight. The first man is of the earth. The second man is the Lord himself from heaven, as is the earthly. Such are they also that are earthly, and as is the heavenly. What's this, Pastor Jody? What's this? My God, I love the Word. You know why I love my church and I love to preach in here? Because I can preach. And I try not to, 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 I try not to go past the Holy Ghost or, or, or try not to go through it, but I can take my time, and, 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 and I'm not under this pressure. You know what I mean? And, and i got people here that really love Jesus and that really love the Word, that's hungry for the Word, that pulls on me to pull out some revelation so we can leave here changed. Revelation is what changes you. And it's not how loud that I yell. It's the power and the demonstration of the Holy Ghost and the, the power that we speak with, right? And, and that's anointing. Anointing. Say that, anointing. Anointed. That don't mean to have to yell, but sometimes it, it does make you yell. But that, just because I yell and holler, ha, 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 that don't mean I'm anointed. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? That don't mean you're anointed. You roll around, you can jump around, pray in tongues and everything. That don't mean you're anointed. That don't mean that what you're saying is anointed either. Because what you, what, what, well, there'll be a power, there'll be a demonstration to what you're speaking in anointing. First the natural, then the spiritual. Okay? Follow me here. Now watch this. So the first Adam is of the earth, as is the earthly. So they that are such as they are that are heavenly... And as, listen to this, verse number 49. Watch this. And as we have borne the image, say that, the image, of the man of dust. My King James right here says this. And as we have borne the image of the earthly, I know that one might read just a little bit different, this is the King James I've got in my hand here. We shall also bear the image of the heavenly. Let me read that one more time. Y'all didn't get excited about that. And we have borne the image of the earthly. And now we, have, and we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. First that is which is natural. Then that which is spiritual. First that which is natural. Then that which is spiritual. Now I say this, brethren, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Let me say that again. Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. And behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, and I'm not going to go into this right now, we shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, the last trump, the trumpet shall sound, the dead in Christ shall be raised, the dead shall, or the dead shall be raised, incorruptible, and we shall be changed. But I want to I I show you something here. He said, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom, not the kingdom of God. Flesh and blood can't inherit it. Say that flesh and blood cannot inherit it. What is an inherit? What does inherit mean? An inheritance means this: if if we were, if I was to find out that I had a grandmother, and all of a sudden she died, and she had this will and this estate and all this money or all this property, all this stuff, whatever it may be, maybe we didn't know about it, but she had it and she had it back, and she's like, "I'm going to leave this to my grandson for an inheritance." It's, this is something I'm just going to leave from him that I have obtained it. I, I'm the one that worked for it, stuck it back, provided it. But now I'm leaving, so I'm going to leave it to whoever that I, you know, and, and just say it was me. Now she's left me this inheritance. Now I don't know about it until somebody tells me. 
Unless they come to me, unless she's told me, if she didn't tell me, then I'm waiting on somebody to come and tell me about this inheritance and what she's left me. But now if somebody comes, the people with the will or whoever it may be that oversees her estate, they come to me and they say, listen, your grandmother has left you an inheritance. Really? Really? See, I didn't know that. But now you just told me. What does this consist of? Well, here, here's the inheritance. Here's what, it, here's what all is in the inheritance right here. This, this, this. What do I got to do? Well, you've got to follow the instructions. You've got to come and you've got to see with us and visit with us. You've got to sign your name. You've got to go through these, this process. You've got to go through this step. But now you know it's there. So now that I know it's there, now I can receive it. Before, I didn't know it was there. Couldn't receive it. Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. First the natural, then the spiritual. Flesh and blood can't inherit it. Can't see it. But I'm going to show you a mystery. And now he's talking about the rapture. We call it the rapture. People, people differ on this. And I'm not going to argue with you theologically. You believe what you want. I'm just ready. <laughs> And that's what I recommend to you. Whether you believe pre-tribulation, uh, mid-tribulation, after-tribulation, you going through the fire and tribulation, fine. You know what I mean? I'm not going to fight you and argue over it with it. That's why I told a brother, we was out there talking uh, yesterday. At the, uh, we was talking and he'd come up to do a job and we was talking about marriage and divorce and, and we got to talking about it. And, and, and I said, you know, I finally said, well, what do you believe? That, that's, the, that's the question. I'm not going to sit here and keep on with you. What do you believe? That's the, that's, that's the, that's the important thing. How do you take? Because me and you, could, we could argue all day long theologically from every standpoint and both of us be different. Theologically. There's only one divine truth and there's only one Holy Spirit and truth that will bear witness to what truth is. But I'm going to take each individual case. Right? So he said, rightly divide the word of truth. So flesh and blood can't inherit this kingdom. First the natural, then the spiritual. Now we could go real deep into this message and we probably will. I want you to go back, I want you to go to the next scripture that I've got, please. Anybody getting anything? I hope they're all taking notes and stuff. Where's the, where's the note takers? Anybody got note takers? One, two, three. Anybody got note? Okay. I'm, I'm checking on y'all. I'm checking on y'all. Huh. I got my notebook. When I when I when I when I'm under the word, I'm listening and I'm I'm listening to what God's saying and I'm writing notes and I'm I'm going back and I'm feeding on them when I get home. I'm listening to what the Holy Ghost has to say. I'm taking those things and I'm studying them out. I'm a student. He said, "Go and make disciples of all nations." Listen, go and make students of all nations. You know, we we've we've got this big project going and and, and I'm going to give you something natural so you can hopefully grab something supernatural from it. Okay, you know Jesus always taught them naturally. He taught them about, you know, he talked to carpenters about building. He would talk to, he would he would teach them about the kingdom, and he would teach them about how they would go out and plant seed in the ground, how the seed would grow up, how to watch over it, how to nurture it, how it would multiply. He would talk to them in the natural things that they held. I remember being in a meeting, and I'm going to come back to what I said, but I remember being in a meeting one day, and they was talking about planting corn and the corn multiplying, and he was teaching the kingdom, and he was like, "Yeah, I know my." Somebody hollered out, I know my corn stalks this year blew completely over. And the preacher went, Phew. Just like that. He was thinking, he was talking about his garden outside. Ain't nothing wrong with that. The man of God was way deeper than, 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 the, than the garden. You understand? The natural garden. And I, I, I'm out there and I'm learning this in leadership. Say that, I'm a leader. See, we're, we're, we're training leaders. We're making leaders. That's, that's what we're doing. What for? To get into the work of the ministry. To be a team. To accomplish something for God together. United we stand. One purpose. Amen. One vision. One mind. One accord. One voice. We're running one direction. You follow what I'm saying? We're running. 
and we're running. And then all of a sudden, so we're, we're so he said, I'll go and make disciples. I'm a disciple maker. That's what I am. That's what I do. That's my life and my heart. Preach and to make disciples. That's all I do, no matter what I'm doing. I could go tomorrow and I could be on a job site. I'm still preaching and I'm making disciples. That's what I'm doing. You can look at the curtain. You'll see the curtain. But there's something a lot behind that curtain that you don't see. What you see sometimes is just that job. But the kingdom's behind the curtain. We pushing back darkness. We destroying the works of the enemy. You follow what I'm saying? We advance in the kingdom of our God. Why I'm saying this is this. He said, go and make disciples. A disciple is a student. What does a student do? He sits at the feet of his teacher. And I learn from my teacher. First the natural, then the spiritual. First the natural, then the spiritual. And I'm out there and people that work for me that know more than I do in certain areas. Now early on, you might get a little insecure. There's people in this ministry that knows way more and, and more anointed than me. Not more anointed. There's the same anointing coming. It's the, the anointing that comes down the line to equip you for the work of the ministry. For instance, my media team. I can go talk to Miss Ginger. And I mean, they're, they're, they're so gifted because and, and God's using them in these areas. And I'm like, it's just like over my head. So I'm to a point now where I come in and when we have these set up, I'm like, what do y'all want me to do with her and her husband? What do y'all want me to do? Because then, see, I'm not submitting down. I never, you never submit down, okay? Uh, submission comes up, not down. I don't, you know what, you follow what I'm saying to you. But I listen I'm teachable, and I realize that God puts people in places, and we work as a unit to accomplish His will. Now, I can be humble, and I can listen, and I can let God use people in the areas that they're in. So, I can look at somebody that's even working for me, and they know way more than I do in these areas, and I can humble myself and I can listen and be a student. Because I don't know it all. I learned that pretty quick. I, I don't know it all. Actually, don't know too much. I mean, I know a little bit, but, but I'm a student. So I become a student again and I ask questions. Well, what is this? I'm not inferior. You can't take my job. You didn't give it to me. God gave me my position. You didn't. I don't, I don't have to be insecure about something God gave me. Why do I have to be insecure? You can't take something you didn't give. You understand what I'm... You follow what I'm saying to you. I can be settled in that but value the gifts around me. And now I can become a student again and realize that God anoints people and He's working in them just like He's working in you. Now we become a body that's no longer jealous of one another. That's no longer, we're not in competition with each other. We're, we're coming together. I'm sure sh iron sharpens iron. You got stuff that I don't got. I got stuff that you don't got. And together, man, we can, our weaknesses, they won't be none. We'll be standing there. You might be weak in this area where I'm strong, and you might be strong in an area that I'm weak in, and together there is no weakness. You know, back in if you if you go study the tribes out, the blood, the real the, the real tribes that went over there and they took they took blood covenant to a different level where they would cut each other and they would really become blood brothers and they would covenant with one another for life till the death. And they meant it with everything that was in them, and that was the natural. First the natural and the spiritual. And they would covenant with one another. But they ne the tribes would never join, they would never join for their strengths. See, we got a lot of church members, a lot of a lot of churches that are strong in a lot of areas, and we're inferior, or we're not inferior, but we're we're insecure about people that are stronger than us in other areas. So now we now we start to start to start to distance ourselves from the people that's stronger in an area that makes us feel insecure, and and then we start to gravitate towards the people that has the same strengths and everything that we do. And now we've got this these 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 communities that start happening of just strengths, and the weaknesses are still the same. 
instead of embracing other people's strengths and embracing one another's strengths and, and, and saying, okay, it's a body that God has raised, it is raising up and it's His body anyway. First the natural, then the spiritual. So now I can, I can come together and I can see the strengths in somebody and say, okay, now I need that on my team. I need this team member here. I need this team member. Hopefully you need me. Hopefully I'm, I'm, I'm adding value to your life in some way. Hopefully I'm bringing a strength to you and sharpening you in, in some area or another. And so now I can become a student again and not be jealous and not be insecure, but to say, okay, now I realize that, that, that God's put things in me that, that other people doesn't have. And every joint starts to bring a supply to the body. Was sown a natural body, was raised a spiritual body. Are you following me? So now I can become a, a student again and I can listen as long as they don't start to, you know, usurp the authority and think they're more than what they are. Vice versa. Me either. But we can be a student and I can learn and I can listen. I can encourage. I can pray for them. God use them. I need that. I don't have that, but I need it. So now, now, now I can embrace other people's strengths. I can embrace other people's, amen, weaknesses. See, Jesus gave us another commandment. I'm going to take you way deeper. Say, we're going way deeper. We're in a different place in the anointing, church. You don't know that by now? We're in a whole different place in the Spirit. Do you know that, Sister Jean? We had a whole different place. I got to watch what I say anymore. Ask my wife. I got to watch what I say. The Lord told me, He said, I got to watch it. I got to watch what I say because He said, You're going to get it. So I have to watch what comes out of my mouth. That's positive or negative. You see, that, 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 don't throw me out. That's what the Word says. But when the Lord tells you that, there's a lot of harvests. There's a lot of words we don't want to reap a harvest of because we've all messed up and we've all said things we didn't mean. And we've all been, and I'm talking about Christian people. I'm talking about good holy people. And we've said things that we needed to repent of and we needed to walk away from and we needed to go at, make things right with somebody else because we, we wounded them with some words. We wounded them with something. You don't know how powerful your words are sometimes. I always say this. The word, your words has killed more people than guns or, or, or knives ever had. There's a lot of kids on the internet that's blowed their brains out and hung their self and killed their self because some other little devil in a child, yeah, devils are in child's children too. Let me help you with something here. Because some devil in a child used the tongue to kill that person and caused them to, to cause them to commit suicide. It happens every day. They do it live on there. They've done it. They, there's multitudes, multitudes of people. Why? Because of somebody's tongue. And so I, I had to watch because the Lord told me. He said, what you say you're going to get. And he never said that to me. I mean, I know the Word said it, but He said it. And now I'm like, okay, let me be very cautious about what I start talking about, what I say. Let me be careful about that. Let me think before I speak. Let me think before I just throw some dirt on somebody or, or throw, you know, what I'm saying. Speak against my life or my wife in a fit of anger. So I start speaking life. He said, out of your belly would flow rivers of life-giving water. Your, your, your words should be giving life, not bringing death. So now, back to the point. So I humble myself and I become a student again. And I'm sitting at the feet of Jesus. I love to sit at His feet. You can say His feet, and we can, we can use that analogy. Of the, the, you know what I mean? We can use that analogy, and sometimes those, it sounds really good, because we do spiritually, we, we set and prostrate ourselves in a, in, a, in a place of worship, and we worship the Father, and we pray to the Father in Jesus' name. Amen. And we lift up Jesus. And we love Him. The bride loves Him beyond more than anything else in this life. And when you and, you, and we was talking about that one day outside a sister's house. There, remember that? We was talking about being the bride, and, and and we was talking to a brother there, and 
he was still carnal in a lot of ways. And when you're carnal, you can't understand. And it sounds kind of weird when the man's talking about being the bride. I mean, come on. nobody, No man is going to be no bride. They got some weird people out there that want to be brides. And they change in the... And all that stuff. And they can be delivered. You can be delivered if you feel that way. If you're a man, you think you're a woman. Or you're a woman, you think you're a man. We can get you delivered. We can get you set free. We can give you the truth that will help you. Because you know that you're in bondage. And you know that you're... you're most people I've seen that way. Listen, I'm not inferior. I'm not afraid you're going to rub off on me or not. I love you with an everlasting love. And I can see... We can see you set free from that. Because, because really at the end of the day when you're alone in your closet and you're feeling that way and you're in a homosexual lifestyle or sinful lifestyle in general, what will happen is, is you're going to be miserable, man. You, you, can act, you can act good in front of everybody, but when you're alone, you've got that knowing inside of you. But you can be set free from those things. And I'm not here to camp on that, church, okay? I'm here to equip you. So I become a student again. First the natural, then the spiritual. Back to this. I say, well, I'm sitting at the feet of Jesus. You know, he said he put the enemy under his feet, right? Well, if you look at that in the New Testament, who's the feet of Jesus? Why ain't his hands reaching? Why ain't his feet going? Who's the feet of Jesus? We make these statements that I'm sitting at his feet and we use the the lady with the alabaster box because Jesus was the he was he was God in the flesh, the Lord Himself from heaven. So we use that analogy, right? When he was in the body, but he was sown the natural body, he was raised the spiritual body, and he's seated now at the right hand of the Father, the redeemed man, Christ Jesus. The Lord Himself, and He's seated at the right hand of the Father. So when I, when I use that analogy that I'm sitting at his feet, it's a spiritual prostate. It's, it's a natural thing, but it's a spiritual thing. He that is carnal can understand this. That's why Paul would tell them, he said, he told the Corinthian church, he said, I can't even speak to you yet. It's spiritual because you're carnal still. I can't even go into the deep things with you. So it's hard for somebody to understand that. So when you first hear that, you're like, man, I ain't no bride. What do you mean? I'm a man. You know, your voice gets deeper. You know what I mean? You pull up your pants a little tighter. Some people sag them. Now they got skinny jeans, so we, we wear skinny jeans. We don't wear, they don't hardly wear, they wear skinny jeans with a sag now. You ever seen that? They tight. And they, they wear skinny jeans and they're hanging off their rear. You know what I'm talking about? And their, their pants are too short. And they couldn't even pull them up if they wanted to. You know what I'm talking about? They got their boxers on. You know, back in my day, they was, uh, it was baggy, baggy jeans. You had to hold them up. You'd be walking around like that, holding your pants up, and they'd be falling to the floor. You remember that? You'd be walking like that. You thought you was, you thought you was the coolest thing smoking until somebody started swinging on you. Your pants wrapped around your ankles. <laughs> one of them mountain boys up there, hey, one of them mountain boys come down through there, they didn't like it. One of them cowboys come down through there, rednecks, you know what I'm talking about? And you out there, you out there, with them baggy jeans on, they got tight ones on, you go to start swinging and your pants fall down and it ain't long till you ain't got no footwork because your feet get tangled up in it and boom, there you go, fall over and they done whoop you up, son. Whoop you up like crazy. You better hope they don't have cowboy boots on or what's them things called, not cowboy boots, but what's them things called ropers. Man, we used to have them ropers. You better hope they don't have no ropers on or you're going to have roper prints on your head. You know what I'm talking about? And you're going to be getting up like that trying to pull your pants up because you you done, you sagging. You hear me? You're looking cool. <laughs> Ain't that funny though? But that was the truth. That's how we, that's how we live. Man, that's, that was how we, you know what I'm saying? We went through all those styles. Now it's skinny jeans. Now, now it's skinny jeans with a sag. I don't wear a sag, you know, but I don't even know how I got into that. Pastor, let's get back to the message here. But y'all got to laughing, though. We broke some, broke some ice there, right? So we're talking about worship, and now, now we're getting to first the natural, then the spiritual, right? That's, this, is the, this is the whole concept. He says this right here. But seek ye first the kingdom of God. 
and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you. What things was he talking about there? Well, if you look there, he said the things that the Gentiles seek. What did the Gentiles seek? They thought they, they would seek after the clothing, the food, the, the, their, their, their well-being. They would seek those things, okay? Thinking that they could, amen. And he gave us a key, a key that would never change its place, which would be seek first, right? Say that, seek first. Say that, come on. Seek first the kingdom. But flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom. Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom. That's why you can tell people to dress a certain way. You can tell them to take out their earrings. We can tell you to do all this stuff. But if you don't have a spiritual encounter with this Jesus that we tell you about, then we have failed in our mission as Christians. If we don't bring you to a place where you encounter Him for yourself, Right? Now, I know there's boundaries and there's things. Now watch this. Seek first the kingdom. I got this word when I was in a prison cell. And I have never since that day stopped seeking the kingdom first. What does that mean? I'm going to break that down for you. Seek ye. We understand what seek means. Ye to worship, to desire, to endeavor, to inquire. To worship, to inquire, to endeavor. Seek ye. To worship, to endeavor, to to persevere, to, to desire, to desire, to desire. Say desires. Say my desire is for the kingdom. First. Say first. You know what first means? Firstly, that means in time, place, order, or importance. Seek first the kingdom and his righteousness and all the things that everybody else is running for, fighting for, trying to do all this for. Jesus said, I'll add them to you. What Pastor Jody was talking about. Seeking first the kingdom and to please him and to have a relationship with Jesus and to know Him more. And all the things that everybody else is sitting there worrying about and they're working 20 hours, I mean, you know, 20 extra hours a week so they can pay the bills and so they can, and they're working two jobs and they're in fear and, and we're just running after the King. Amen. Being obedient to what He said to please Him in every way, every day of our life. And all them things just are added Say that. They're added. He said he adds them. First the natural, then the spiritual. Seek first the kingdom. What is the kingdom? It's a realm. It's a rule to rule a realm. That's why we say the spiritual realm is more real than the natural realm that we live in. They that worship Him must worship Him and in spirit and in truth. That's why Jesus told them, on this mountain you'll not worship Him. He, he, not this mountain, not in Jerusalem, but they, He'll seek such. The Father will to worship Him in what? In spirit and in truth. First the natural, then the spiritual. What is righteousness? What's this? Equity of character or act, specifically Christian justification. Character. Say that, character. Anybody know what character is? Character. Character. Seek first the kingdom. Seek first to please Him. Seek first to please the Lord. Seek first the kingdom and His righteousness and all these things. Will be added to you. I heard a testimony last night. 
so powerful, this man, and he was a Christian. And he understood that Jesus said, I'm giving you the keys to the kingdom. That it's the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Jesus is the way, the truth, the life, and it's his good pleasure to give it to you. To bring you into his inheritance. To give what is right. Amen. Now watch this. Man, I feel an anointing in this place. This is power and demonstration. Your lives are going to be changed after tonight. You're never going to be the same after tonight. And he got in there, and he was a businessman, and he said, Lord, he got in the library every day, and he got into those books and the Bibles. He said, Lord, if you just give me a key that will make me rich in this world. Now listen, that will make me rich. I'll supply and give abundantly to your work and kingdom. And they said he prayed that. And he went and he looked. All of a sudden he got a thought. After praying and praying and praying, he got a thought. God gave him a key. He started using that key. He started being obedient to what he had been given. And he started increasing and he went to making millions, to making multi-millions, to being a multi-millionaire. Watch this. They knew him. The lady evangelist said she went down there to his house and his house was I mean, she said it had bowling alleys in it and everything. She said they went down there and they held a revival. She said they, that he, they was eating dinner and he said, Hey, will you come back to my house? That's what it was. They go back to his house. and she, she said, I instantly got grieved in my spirit as soon as I pulled down his driveway. I was grieved. She said, but I went on. She said, the first thing he started showing me, look at this. This painting here was $3 million. I paid $5 million for this. This, this. Look at the car. Look at this. 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 She said, I was so grieved, though. And then all of a sudden, she said, that he, he didn't give me no offering. Didn't 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 not give one dollar to the to the revival, but he had made a promise. God followed through with his and gave him the key to get that money. But he said that he was going to finance the kingdom. God didn't care for him having the things. But something happened in his heart. Remember the devourer that we was talking about. I bet he wasn't paying his tithe. I guarantee he wasn't giving 10% where it belonged. What happened? The devourer was in there working the whole time in his company. What's this? You better hear me. His heart changed. His heart got hard to the things of God. All of a sudden it come out later they was mishandling things. Things were happening in the company. It was other people doing it. But it all come back. He ended up going to prison. He ended up losing everything that he had. Everything. And he ended up dying. I don't know why I'm telling you that. First the natural. Then the spiritual. Are you all okay? Can I go a little deeper? Seek first the kingdom. As that testimony that I told you about when the man was telling me about, he got a word from a preacher. And the preacher told him, said, hey, because they was talking about the tithe and he didn't understand it because he was a young Christian and that's okay. That's why we teach and disciple and train you and teach you the Word of God and you trust 
the teacher. You trust to, to respond. You, you trust those things until, right? Follow the instructions. And, and the preacher told him, he said, well, why, let me challenge you. Why don't you do it for a year faithfully? Just give 10% where it belongs. Give it to God. Bring it to the church, wherever you go. Be faithful in it. He said, okay, I'll do that. He said within no time he was making $1,000 a week steadily. Which is not a lot of money, but $1,000 a week. Okay? See, I'm sowing something into you. You just don't know it yet. I know some of you thinking, man, $1,000, oh my God, if I had that a week, I'd be, it's not a lot of money. Say that, it's not a lot of money. It's how you see something. Mountain's only as big as you see it. Some mountains are molehills if you see them correctly. <laughs> Are you hearing me? <laughs> Y'all going to surpass that one day? You're going to be like, Pastor, what's that? You're going to be telling somebody, hey, that mountain you see, it's just a molehill. <laughs> if you just obey the instructions and you just follow the, if you follow, you, you, you just follow first the natural, then the spiritual. And he, and he followed those instructions that the preacher gave him by faith. He wasn't really hearing from God yet. But he followed the man of God's instructions. He's seen it in the Bible, of course. So he did that. He said after a year, he said he was at his house and he was making steadily $1,000 a week and every week he'd take $100 and he'd put it into the offering plate. It was the tithe. After one year, he said he, he was at home. His money was at his shop. So he said, all right. He told his wife, he said, we got to go. I got to get this money. I got to get my tithe. So he'd been doing it for a year faithfully. It just become part of his life. That's just what he had to do. So he's on his way back. And the Holy Ghost speaks to him and says, hey, are you going to get that? So you, you know, is it so you won't? Holy Ghost, let me get this right. Is it so you... You'll give enough or you won't give too much. Which one is it? Because he was counting it. He said he thought about it for a minute. He said, I want you to give 200 this time. He felt a leadership. He was like, okay. All right, I'll obey you, Lord. He said, I went home and I got 200 and I took it. He said, never since that day would he ever let me give just the 10%. Watch what happened. The enemy comes in, starts speaking to him. Because the pastor always teaches on tithe. Everybody's not at the same spiritual level. Remember that, church. We minister to people to all different levels, okay? So you might think, well, I've heard all that. Well, other people ain't. And faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing. And sometimes you hear 15, 20, 30 times and all of a sudden, boom, it goes off and you're like, whoa, and fall back on your face. And you're like, why didn't I get that before? Hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing. And boom, you get it off and you get victory. And boom, you're walking in a different place. You're a different person. Because you're in a different place. You're at a different level, spiritually speaking. And then you look at somebody that was in the place that you was in and you're like, man, I see it. Now you can see clearly to help them get delivered from where they're at. So the enemy comes in and starts telling him, see, your pastor shouldn't even teach that tithe. I know it was the enemy because I sat and talked to him. And, and I know who, it wasn't God telling him that, to go against his pastor. Amen. God don't do that. Amen. That's a deception of the enemy. Yes, so, so he starts taking it, listening. He's like, yeah, that's right. Well, if we taught it this way, now he knows more than the pastor. Well, if we would just teach it this way and teach people to be led by the Spirit, do what they wanted, just follow the Holy Ghost. Yeah, we should, but this wasn't the right. Understand what I'm saying to you. Then, then, then you know, they know more than the pastor then. He know more. So he took something. He's taking a lie. God was using him and challenging him. But he took that, and now he's thinking, I pay way more than the tithe. I don't know why you got to teach people to bring 10%. You should just tell them to be led by the Spirit and they'd bring more. See? You follow?
follow what I'm saying? First the natural, then the spiritual. And he's telling me this, and I'm listening, and I wait, and I wait, and I wait, and I pray, and I come back, and I pray. And the Lord showed me he, he was really wanting to know the answer, but he needed to hear it from a different voice at that moment. He's two close friends with the pastor. And the Lord gave me the, the exact... He, he gave it to me because here's, here's what happened to him. Once he responded to the 200 a week, and then it would go to three, sometimes it would be more, sometimes... So then he just started being led, and he, 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 he never gave less than 10%. It was always double or more from that day forward. God would never allow him to do that again. Never allow him just to give his tithe ever again. Because God was taking him to a different level. Say we're going to a deeper level. Come on, we're going to a different level. He never let him go back to that level again. Just the bare minimal. Watch this. He said within no time his, his pay went from one thousand a month or a week to three and four thousand, sometimes more a week. And the days that he worked went from this many to down to three or four sometimes. Which freed him to do worship and ministry and what his passion was. So I went back and I judged my, I judged it and I was in there in the prayer closet and the Spirit of the Lord, I didn't just try to come up with some religious and give him all this stuff and the time, I'm not his pastor anyway. You know what I mean? I mean, either way, I ain't his corrector, I ain't his pastor, none of that. But I got a leadership and God gave me the answer. He said, you know why? He said, because his faithfulness and his consistency. Say that, faithfulness and consistent. See, God's about training your character. He's about training your faithfulness. He's about your character. He's about your development. That's what He's about. He don't care for you walking in abundance and overflow and anointings, but not at the expense of character and running His name through the mud or you not making it till the end. Not at that expense. Because that's not love. God's school's different. You can go to man's school and that's good. We should study to show ourselves approved, but when you go through God's school, He's going to take you through the school, the right school. He's going to develop your character, your mental, your moral capacity. Your, he's going to develop you in ways that, that nothing or nobody else will. And the Lord said, see His consistency. When I watched His faithfulness and I watched His consistency for that year, then I spoke to Him. Then I spoke to him. Why did he speak to him then? Because he could trust him a little more. And he needed to challenge him because what he was doing wasn't enough no more. Not to go further with God, it wasn't. It might have been enough for him or at that moment what he thought, but he got to a place where he was complacent, everything was good, and now he needed to go further. He's praying, I want more of you, Jesus. I want more of you, Lord. And God says, okay, now I want you to give 200 in. First the natural. Say that again. First the natural. Then the spiritual. You've got to learn the kingdom. That's why we're here to teach it to you. Nobody else will teach it to you, but you didn't hire me. They didn't hire me. Nobody hired me. God appointed me. And at the end of the day, He provides for me. And he is, my, he is my provision. You understand me? So I don't have to be insecure about none of that. And you're going to thank me one day. Watch this. So, so He said, now because of His consistency, now I could speak to Him. Because of His faithfulness, now I could challenge Him. Now I required Him to do more than just His tithe. If he wanted more of me, he's going to have to do more. Well, that acts like you're buying God. No, no. God's, God's school and his kingdom's different, church. If he can't trust you with the natural things, he'll never trust you with the spiritual things. Never. Never will he trust you. First the natural, then the spiritual. Say that. First the natural, then the spiritual. 
A lot of us, we cry out for more of Jesus. We cry out for more of God. We cry out for more anointing. We cry out, and then God starts speaking to us about something. We're like, uh uh-uh. uh. Uh uh. I remember my wife, you know, she was telling you about me sewing that van into her life. I remember I, my van had tore up, and, 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 and see, he had gave me another car, okay? I didn't have money to go buy it, and I didn't go get a loan. But he provided for me like he said he would. What was I doing? What he told me to do. Exactly what he told me to do, I was doing it. I was preaching from the day I, from the day I, I answered the call. I was running a business that, I, that he told me to run. I was doing everything he told me to do. Was I doing it perfect? No, I needed him. And I remember the first night, I got that second car, that van. I got it back. I thought, man, I've got a security now. i got two vehicles. It was, it was night time. I wasn't married at the time. She was just a friend. And, uh, and I'm driving out there in the fog. And I, I mean, that van, I thought, sister, look, if that other one tears up, I got a security blanket. I'm going to drive that other one. You know what I mean? I mean, it was a security. I felt secure. I thought, man, I got two vehicles now. You know, a couple months before that, I didn't have a vehicle. My mom let me use her just for a little while until God got me the vehicle that he wanted me to have. Now this one was fixed. Now I had two vehicles. And I'm riding down through there. And the Holy Ghost says, now take that to, to that lady down there. Take that to Jody down there off of the thing. I said, what? I said, it's foggy up here. It was nighttime. It's foggy up here. It was foggy. I couldn't even see. I was driving up on 111. Anybody been up on Van Buren County? I was driving out and couldn't even see in front of the, I could barely see the road. I said, well, I'll do it tomorrow. He said, no, you ain't either. You do it tonight. And I just got paid that day. Now, in those days, my paycheck was this. I had enough to pay some bills, and then I had to believe God to make it from Wednesday to Friday in gas. After my tithe come out, which was first, after I paid some bills, by Wednesday... I'm believing God for gas for Thursday and Friday to even get to the time to pay, get another check. But I trust God. My eyes were on heaven. God, you said you would. I said, well, we'll wait till tomorrow tonight. I said, all right. So I get that van. I turn around. I call her. I said, hey, I need to come and see you. What are you coming down here for? You know, single woman, you know what I'm saying, kids. She's like, what are you coming down here? Nighttime in the fog. You just got out of prison. Yeah, it had been a little while, but man, you, you, what are you coming down here for, bruh? I'm like, listen, just let me come. It ain't nothing bad, you know. I don't want to come in your room by yourself or nothing like that. Just please let me come down there and see you tonight. I got something to, to, to do or something like that. She's like, all right. So I go down there and she gets in the van. I said, here you go. I said, but first I got to do something. The Lord said, you take it and buy it. The battery was about messed up. He said, you go buy a new battery. Now, I understand I have my paycheck, but I didn't have much help. I mean, it was, it was, it, them days were hard. Them days were, them days were training, faith training. Them days God was training me. He's still training us, but just on a different level. But them days were he was really teaching us faith. He was really teaching me how to how to not trust the natural and to trust him. But to first the natural, then the spiritual. First the natural, then the spiritual. He was training me. And I just obeyed him. And I went and I got her a new battery. Walmart that day didn't I got her a new battery, I put it in there for her. I said, will you take me back and drop me off? I said, this is your van. And I gave it to her. Later on down the road, she ended up giving me $1,000. She's like, here, you got to take this. And it was like one of those things. Lord, I did what you said. He said, just take it because she don't understand it. She, he, and he said this to me. He said, she will one day, but she don't yet. Back to, the, back to the testimony, church. So now, the Lord said since he, he was consistent, 
See, a lot of times during those trials and during those times that you're, that you're pressing and you're walking by faith, if we seen everything, if we knew everything, you'd never have to be in a place where you walk by faith. And the requirement in the New Testament is to walk by Say that. It's to walk by and not by to walk by faith and not by sight. Abraham was justified, right, by what? His faith. His faith. His faith. So since he was consistent, he was faithful. He was seeking first the kingdom. Now, the king of the kingdom, which is Jesus of Nazareth, the anointed one and his anointing. Understand this. He's the king of the kingdom. Kings don't give you an option. Kings make decrees and you either follow them or you do not. This is not a democracy, it's a kingdom. Listen, and the king has made the decree. Now watch this. He said, I'll make my, myself manifest to those that sought not after me. I'll reveal myself to those that didn't ask. Because he is the king of kings. He's El Shaddai. He is I am. More than enough. More than enough. He's still God. Faithfulness. Consistency. His faithfulness. His consistency in his tithe. Now God could speak to him. Now God could challenge him. He couldn't stay there no more, sister. When you want to go on with God, you can't stay where you're at. When you want to stay with God, when you want to, when you want to go on with God, you can't give like you used to. You can't stay where you used to. You can't pray like you used to. You can't press like you used to. You can't read like you used to. You can't go where you used to go. You got to give up some things and sacrifice and you got to press and you got to let go of some things and sometimes that means let go of some people in your life. That even means let go of some family sometimes. That's the hardest thing for us to do sometimes, but you want to go on with God. He said, lay aside every weight, everything that so easily pulls you down. Lay aside those things that hinders you from running your race. Lay aside those things and get a hunger for the Spirit of God again. Get a hunger for this Jesus that you have encountered. And he said, now, through his faithfulness and consistency, now I could speak to him. And when he spoke to him, he responded. And the enemy come right after that. And held him in a place of bondage until another preacher came. Thank God I wasn't in an immature state or I would have missed it. But I went back and prayed and I waited till the Holy Ghost gave me the word. I waited till, till God gave me the word for him. And if he didn't, I wouldn't have said nothing. I would have just went on. And he said, the tithe is what it opened access. To my realm, to my to my provision, to my to my protection, it opened it opened it up, and it, he said, the Lord said, I rebuke the devourer, just like I said in Malachi that I would rebuke the devourer when they brought the tithe. Devourer, there, those of you that are taking notes, write the word devourer down, and I want you to go to Malachi. I want you to study that out for yourself and look what it says in the book of Malachi in the Strong's Concordance. You know what it is? It's a seed eater. In that Malachi, he was talking about natural crops and things like that. And their, the things that they went out and worked for, usually it was trading in donkeys and animals and food and stuff like that back in them days. The same thing. 
First the natural, then the spiritual. He said, his consistency and faithfulness caused me to speak to him and challenge him to a greater level. And now I have rebuked the devourer, which is the seed eater. Now, since the seed eater was rebuked, I wanted to challenge him above his tithe, even though at the time he really didn't even know exactly what he was doing. He just knew he was giving way more than his tithe, actually doubled at that time. And he didn't even know it, but what he had doubled, sister, was the seed that was going to bring his harvest. Jesus said, I give you the keys to the kingdom. We've got this Christianity today. I see somebody, listen, don't, hey, look at me. Look at me. Don't get mad at me. Look, don't look, get mad at me. Listen. Because you ain't heard this before. Because somebody too, that don't know it or ain't teach you. Don't you let that thing get you. That preacher always talk about money. No, 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 no. no, no. First the natural, then the... And he said within a very short time, he went from making this to making that. Which God didn't let him stay like that, and he won't let him stay like that, because the more he increases naturally, the more he's going to challenge him to give more. For what? The preaching of the gospel. The building of the kingdom, the making of disciples. When you learn this truth right here, when this revelation goes off in you and you start responding, your lives, your businesses, everything, your walk with God, everything will go to a whole new level. And you'll be so free from the love of things and money. You'll be so hungry for more of Him, but those things won't, but they'll come to you like a magnet. Because you're not after those things. At the end of the day, when you're kingdom minded, you're not after those. You're after Him. At the end of the day, your whole, everything in you, every desire that's down in you is to please Him. Any act of obedience is just for me another chance to prove to Him. I can't earn it. You can't earn your salvation. But every time he challenges me, it's another chance for me to prove to him that I trust him. It's another chance for me to grow in a place of faith to show him that I love him and that nothing I have comes before him. Because at the end of the day, first the natural then the spiritual. Anybody getting anything tonight out of this? That's why he said, when you lay down your life, I'll give you my righteousness, Jesus said. I'm going to give you my right standing with God. I bought and paid for you, Jesus said. Nobody can pay, pay the price that he paid. You can't work from now until the time. You can, you can give all the money you had. That don't make you more right with God. You can't buy it. You can't earn it. But you can receive it. You can receive life, what He's offering you. You can receive deliverance. You can get up thankful and say, you know what, I'm going to walk in a newness of life. I'm going to put on the new man. I'm taking off the old man. I'm putting on the new man. And I'm going to change my mind. And I'm going to walk in a new life. I'm going to walk in a new direction. I'm not going back to that old place. I'm not going back to that old way. I'm not going back to them old friends. I'm coming out from among them. I'm going to be ye separate. And the Lord said, come out from among them. Be ye separate. And I'll receive you unto myself. What you mean? You put on. See, you do that yourself. You put on that new man. You're clothed in Christ. You're clothed in His glory. And you say, you know what? I'm walking a new man. I'm walking in a newness of life. 
I ain't no drug addict no more. That's a lie of the enemy. I ain't no drug addict no more. I ain't no prostitute. I ain't no whoremonger no more. I ain't no lust fiend no more. I ain't addicted to those things no more. I'm addicted to the Word of God and to the Spirit of God. I'm so hungry for more of Jesus that I cannot contain myself. Repentance, all it is, brother, is this. Change your mind. Say that. Change my mind. I repented. I changed my mind, which changed my direction, which changed my talk. And I met God. He met me right there where I was at. And the, he said this, Jesus said, it's already finished. It's already accomplished. It's already finished. Redemption's paid for. I changed my mind and made an act of my free will to believe it and turn in that direction. And I made a choice one day in a prison cell. I said, either this Jesus is real and I'm going all in or he's a liar. All this stuff's fake and we can throw it away. But listen to me, he come too far now. <laughs> this God's alive. This Jesus is real. You understand what I'm saying to you? <laughs> this Jesus is real can you give him a hand clap of praise in this place come on hallelujah to the Lamb come on stand with me in this place stand with me all over this place hallelujah to the Lamb of God come on give him praise come on give him praise give him praise hallelujah to the Lamb of God those of you online listen we love you we call you blessed today but I'm going to minister to these people today praise God share this video Man, I pray that this has challenged you. We're talking about the kingdom here today. Amen. We're going to close with that right there. Ms. Ginger, if you take us out with that. My God, give us something to mute some music here today. I want you all to respond. And I'm going to.